know, Byron, but don't worry. I'm sure somebody will be out there to snuggle with you in this cooler weather. Yes, we did hear that you said the word snuggle, and we'll not let that rest for some time. But you can see now a second of the Birmingham boys has joined. So Nena has now walked in, and he's standing over. So he's pushed that female from where she was feeding. She's now been resigned to eating off the face, and he's licking around the eyes and the ears and all of that area <laughs> she, she doesn't look too impressed by it she had been working so hard to detach the one leg from the carcass and she'd gotten almost all the way through and she was breaking the hip joint when Nena came walking in and Suko in the distance is not too phased by Nena now approaching the other two are still quite some way away they're closer towards the quarantine open area so they're not going to be here just yet I don't think but maybe with the sound of feeding we might see them coming in as well but Nena looks absolutely magnificent. He's dark and he's full and, and healthy from that buffalo kill that he had yesterday. And they must be just so happy to have two buffalo in two days. Must be a wonderful thing after having so few buffalo over the last few months. But you can see, look at his mane. It's starting to get darker and darker. Now remember Nena when he used to be very blonde. And now you can see there's this dark black patches coming through all over the place and he is looking wonderful look at that face so the reason why we know it's Nena is if you look on his nose there you can see two lines that run over his nose in an equal sign that is the most characteristic sort of scarring that he's got oh, big teeth as well so that's the easiest way to recognize him I also find that he's probably one of the better looking of the four Birminghams not to say that any of the others are ugly lions but I just there's something about Nena I like the way that his mane stands so tall you can see he almost gets like a mohawk on top of his head well not a mohawk but a maybe a perm is probably better a very tall mane on Nena and it's, it's really is a beautiful color it's a kind of got this ginger and black mixed in and I find him photographically and visually very appealing Outback, you're wondering how bad this buffalo is starting to smell. Well, the answer to that outback is that I haven't even smelt it yet. Is, the wind is drifting away from me. We strategically parked ourselves so that the wind would blow over our shoulder. But I wouldn't imagine it's too bad. I mean, it will smell, but it's not going to be too hectic because it's actually quite cold today. So we've had overcast weather. There's no sun that's out at the moment. So you'll find that it's cool. It's it's. There's been little sort of sun baking it in any way. Last night was quite a cold night. And that means that this would actually be somewhat still fairly fresh. It's it's not too bad. But I would imagine if we parked on the other side, there would definitely be some sort of scent emanating from that buffalo. Had it been a hot day, it probably would have been a lot more unbearable. You can actually see, though, which is very interesting, is generally on... Um, when you have a buffalo kill and you have a situation where it's stood for two days like this one has, if you go zoom into the meat, you should actually see little bits of maggot activity. But there is no maggot activity there whatsoever. So there's a few flies, and that's because it's actually not very hot at all. Nena, no, are you full, buddy? Have you got no space for more buffalo? Look at him, though. Is he not wonderful? Lisa, are you wondering, of the four lions, do we know who the alpha lion is? Lisa, difficult to say. We have spent so little time with the Birminghams, all four together. Look, she's not interested. He wants to see if she's a possible mating option. But Lisa, of the four lions, we haven't seen very much of them together. So it's difficult to have seen what the pecking order is. And because they cover such a large expanse and so many prides, all four males are seen with the different prides at different times. So it's it's a difficult one to work out who is actually in charge of what's going on. It's not like the Medjingalan coalition where they used to spend so much time together and you used to be able to see who would lead in, who would lead the charges if they fought, or who would be the first one to be mating. In this case with the Birminghams, it's almost like they spend so much time apart that it's really not easy to know actually who's on top of but I would imagine that Nena and Insuku being that they they physically seem to me a bit larger they've also taken on a much darker tone than what Tinyo and Mfumo have taken on you can see Nena's skin next to the lioness he's almost got like a grey black colour to his coat you see that and that's from him becoming one of the more dominant ones within the coalition he's secreting a lot of testosterone which is causing a melanin production and that's what's darkening that fur up so i would imagine one of these two is kind of in control mostly and then you'll find that probably tinyo and Mfumo are the last two but it's difficult to say i mean that could be completely wrong and you'll find even with these coalitions is that there'll be an ebb and flow of dominance so now with insuku maybe carrying a bit of an injury in nena or 
Fumo or Tinho might be able to then pass him and become more dominant and try and get into mating um, before this male is able to because of his injury. So it's difficult to say, but you can see how he's sniffing around. Not very happy lioness to have him sniffing around. She's obviously not in the mood for mating given that she's got it. This is not going to be the end of that fight. I love Insuku's reaction in the background. As you can see, there wasn't one. <laughs> so even though there was a bit of a spat, Insuku is not really interested at all. But you can hear this lioness is not happy. So she's saying, you will not go anywhere near me. I am not in the mood for mating. I'm here to eat. And you might find with the pressure of these four males all around this carcass that she actually decides that enough is enough and she moves off again. So we'll see how it plays out. Are you grumpy boy? Don't worry, Byron will sympathize with you. He gets that a lot from the ladies. <laughs> that sound though is absolutely incredible when they growl at each other like that. It is the most intense sound. It cuts right through you and you make it makes you feel little. It, I would imagine in back in the day when people used to traverse these areas in ox wagons how these kind of sounds at night must have just put people on edge every time it's it's a crazy sound and i'm glad that we weren't in those times when you had to do all of those things because it must have been a very very tough experience and you can see in the top there there's a few vultures hanging around as well so at the moment i've only seen white backs and hooded vultures there are lots of vultures spread around all around us at the moment and these guys are just sitting waiting their turn so they know that the lions are still here there's still lots of food for these vultures and if the lions move off they can flock down and come and grab so instead of wasting energy and flying and, and consuming the energy that they've got in cold weather like this much better for them to sit at a carcass and just wait and hope for the best now we're going to see if our spat continues but while we do that let's go back to mr snuggles himself and see what he's doing with his elephants and whether or not he's managed to get a better visual